Hello, folks. I'm going to model some previous exam questions um, that relate to the functionalism and Marxism sections of the education topic that we've done. So the blue grid um, and the red grid. So um, we're going to look at two of them. The first one I'm going to look at is the uh, June 2019. So um, the 15 marker that was asked of students in 2019. Now in the exam, you only get one 15 marker for education, which is a compulsory question. Everyone who chooses, uh, everyone who takes sorry, the education topic has to do the 15 marker. And then you get a choice of two 35s and you pick whichever one of those you prefer, but the 15 you have to do. So using sociological evidence and examples, explain how schools prepare young people for work. So how schools prepare young people for the workplace. Explain how schools prepare young people for the workplace. So what schools are doing that will ultimately prepare them for the workplace when they get there. Now with a 15 marker, we must provide the examiner with knowledge or what they call AO1, which is names, sociologists' names, and their concepts or terms. We have to provide them with AO1 knowledge, names or terms. And we also must provide the examiner with AO2. And AO2 is analysis. The best way you show an examiner you are doing analysis is when you use the phrase, this shows, or this means. It's just a marker to them that you're doing some AO2 or some analysis. For a 15 mark, you're assessed on those two skills. AO1, names and concepts, AO2, analysis, or this shows. So... The way that I normally structure these questions or the way I think them through is I always um, work my way to the start of the course. So I always start myself with, right, what's the first grid we did? We did functionalism and education, so blue grid. Does anyone on that grid suggest that schools prepare young people for work? And I think, yeah, absolutely. Definitely skills, provide skills, provides, um, allocates a role. It um, ultimately teaches you to work hard. So I'd argue that actually I need a functionalism paragraph or a blue paragraph on how schools prepare young people for the workplace. So I start it with schools, prepare young people for the workplace. by providing skills and roles. So that's my starter. I address the question at the start, as young people for the workplace provide providing skills and roles. There are three functions in education. Socialization. Providing skills and qualifications and allocating roles in the workplace due to ability. There's three function education, socialization, providing skills and qualifications and allocating roles in the workplace due to ability. For Davis and Moore, education promotes a meritocracy. Education promotes a meritocracy. The system is fair and society is openly mobile. For Davis and Moore, education promotes a meritocracy. The system is fair and society is openly mobile. 
education ensures that the most talented students occupy oops, the most demanding roles. For Davis and Moore, education promotes a meritocracy. The system is fair and society is openly mobile. Education ensures that the most talented occupy the most demanding roles. I'm going to put in the workplace. Trying to keep on focusing my attention back to the phrasing of this question wherever I can. Now, I always aim, or you should always aim at a 15 marker and a paragraph to try and produce three sociologists where possible. So I've got the three functions, which isn't a sociologist, but it's definitely knowledge. I've got Davis and Moore. And then I think, well, actually, for Parsons, it's teaching young people that they have to work hard, which would prepare them very well for the workplace. So for Parsons, Education teaches that status must be achieved. It teaches that status must be achieved, that we are judged by universalistic standards. Oops. For Parsons, education teaches us that we must, a status must be achieved. And we are judged by universalistic standards. Education teaches us that we must, well, sorry, education teaches us values like achievement only happens with hard work and effort. So, Parsons, education teaches us the status must be achieved, that we're judged by universalistic standards, and it teaches us that values like achievement only happens with hard work and effort. Okay, so I've got three functions, Davis and Moore and Parsons. Now, I haven't got Durkheim because I didn't feel it was necessarily he was saying that it prepares us for the workplace. I felt he was more explicitly saying it prepares us to function in society more generally. So I didn't really feel like it flowed as much there. So at the end of those three bits of knowledge, the three functions, Davis and Moore and Parsons, that's all AO, there's lots of um, AO1 or knowledge there. Then I must say, this shows, I have to show the examiner that I'm changing skill. And with the this shows, I have to directly reference the question. I have to, with the this shows, you're showing the examiner, you are referencing, you are answering the question that you, they gave you. So this shows schools prepare young people for the workplace. This shows schools prepare young people for the workplace. by providing skills needed in work. They prepare young people for work, the workplace by providing skills needed in work, teaching young people to work hard and allocating a role in employment. So schools prepare young people for the workplace because it provides them skills needed in work, it teaches them to work hard, and it will allocate them a role in employment. Prepares them by providing them skills, by allocating them a role, and ultimately teaching them they have to work hard in order to gain any statuses or status. Okay, that's paragraph one. Ultimately, that's a blue paragraph because it's all functionalism. It's quite important never to mix a functionalist and a Marxist 
So we can have functionalist and Marxist paragraphs in a 15 mark or if anything, that's quite important to have a good mixture. But what we don't do is we don't put functionalist and Marxist in the same paragraph because they have completely opposing views. It doesn't flow or link and it will mean that your analysis or your this shows won't make sense because they say opposing things. So that's my paragraph one. My paragraph two, again, I work my way through the course. So I think, well, what's the next grid we've done? Right, Marxism. So with Marxism, would they argue that schools prepare young people for the workplace? Well, yeah, they do, because what they argue is schools prepare young people to be exploited, particularly if they're working class. So then I think, right, okay, so Bowles and Gintis about good, good work attitudes. Okay, so then my paragraph two then, oops, is going to be a Marxism paragraph. So, and then I think to myself, well, how does it prepare young people for work? So I say, um, right, let me address the question. Schools, this is paragraph two. Schools prepare young people for the workplace. Just check that's exactly the same phrasing. Schools prepare young people for the workplace by preparing them to be exploited. to be exploited. Schools prepare young people for the workplace by preparing them to ultimately or be to be exploited. For Bowles and Gintis, for Bowles and Gintis, education, education is about transmitting good worker attitudes. Capitalism requires a passive and docile workforce. Capitalism requires a passive and docile workforce who are prepared to accept low skill, low paid jobs. Schools correspond with the needs of the workplace or, this is just me adding it, the needs of capitalism ultimately when they're saying the needs of the workplace they're saying the needs of capitalism or the needs of, of you know the bourgeoisie when I'm looking back through this so I'm looking then I think what well, alphas are education's an ideological state apparatus tool used by governments to teach ruling class ideas now that does explain why we haven't had the revolution Karl Marx prophesied that it never happened but I don't know whether that really helps us understand how schools are preparing young people to be exploited. I'm not sure he's explicitly identifying how it um, prepares them for exploitation and work. I think he's more explaining why we've never, we don't consider alternatives to capitalism. So I've got Bowles and Guinness. I don't think Althusser's is relevant. For Bourdieu, Again, he's a bit more, he's about the middle class and about the middle class, why they achieve and why the working class aren't engaging in lessons, which again, it doesn't really tie into this whole idea of the workplace. So the only one I've got left that feels like it does is for Dan Finn and uh, Phil Cohen. So Dan Finn and Phil Cohen argue... The only skills developed in vocational courses are those with low skilled jobs. I always put low skilled jobs in the inverted commas because, as I said to you before, I don't, I, if 
fundamentally believe that jobs aren't low skilled um that actually they're undervalued via pay because obviously when lockdown happened those people who ultimately considered to have low skilled jobs were still the ones working whilst everyone else was safe so i like to put it in inverted commas to make it clear that you know that's their phrasing or other people's phrasing developed in vocational courses are those with low skilled jobs with poor prospects of advancement low skilled jobs with poor prospects of advancement and they are largely occupied by working class groups and ethnic minorities. So I aim for three, but it doesn't really work here. I've got two. Um, but use the concepts they use. Still good knowledge. At the end of that paragraph, I've got this shows. Must have this shows at the end of every paragraph. So this shows, and I use the phrasing of the question. This shows schools prepare young people for the workplace. Schools prepare young people for the workplace. By pre preparing them. To be exploited, preparing them to be exploited, and accepting low pay. So it prepares them to be exploited and accepting low pay and boredom. low skill and low pay and boredom it preparing them for the workplace by ensuring that they are prepared to accept low paid jobs and be incredibly bored and docile so we offer the examiner two paragraphs for the moment once we get to the end of the course we'll see if we can add in a third but how schools prepare young people for work Functionalism paragraph, Davis and Moore and Parsons and free functions. Marxism paragraph, Bowles and Gintis, Dan, Phil and Phil Cohen. But clear this shows, which ref refers back. The second question I want to look at is the 2017 15 marker. So again, you've got no choice with this one. You get what you're given. Um, and 15 marker will will see the difference between your grades quite significantly. We're using sociological evidence and examples, explain the influence. So what's the influence of the hidden curriculum on experiences of education? The influence of the hidden curriculum on experiences of education. This one's a bit wordy. So on our, the influence of the hidden curriculum on our experiences of education. So same thing, what I do here is I look to try and work my way through um, the grids. Sometimes what I like to do in a 15 marker is to provide the examiner with an in, like a definition. Um, sometimes I just find it helps me pull out some good points. So I'm just gonna note that the hidden curriculum, don't always have to, but sometimes I find it helpful. The hidden curriculum, is unwritten or unofficial lessons. It transmits norms and values within a classroom. Curriculum is what you need to pass an exam. The hidden curriculum is unwritten or unofficial official lessons it transmits norms and values within a classroom it's kind of like a little starter but just a little definition of the hidden curriculum 
So I worked my way back through the grids and I think, right, first grid I ever did was functionalism, functionalism. Um, anyone mentioned the hidden, yeah, Durkheim. Durkheim explicitly uses the word hidden curriculum, which means he comes first on the list. So the first thing is, for Durkheim, it is through, oh no, hang on a minute, I've got to reference the question that we're doing. So <laughs> paragraph one. I think, well, Durkheim mentions hidden curriculum, but he argues the hidden curriculum creates idle citizens or creates good, solid social beings. So the hidden curriculum, the hidden curriculum can influence us, or can influence our experiences and ensure we function successfully. So same, right? The purpose of it is to ensure we function. For Durkheim, it is through the hidden curriculum. It is through the hidden curriculum that children become social beings. And ideal citizens. The hidden curriculum. The hidden curriculum. teaches everyone the same norms and values and creates social solidarity and creates social solidarity within education and society. So we've got Durkheim, hidden curriculum. He mentions it, so he comes first. And I think, well, okay, next person we did was Parsons. And actually, to be taught, you have to achieve status and you have to be judged by universal standards would happen via hidden messages. It's not something you learn to pass an exam. So for Parsons, it is through the hidden curriculum that we learn statuses must be achieved and that we are judged by universalistic standards. We are judged by universalistic standards. Similar to before, we are taught Achievement is the result of hard work and effort. So I aim for three, got Durkheim, Parsons and his universal standards. And then third one, I've got Davis and Moore. And for Davis and Moore, Education promotes a meritocracy. Again, although they don't specifically mention the word hidden curriculum, it promotes a meritocracy or the fairness via hidden messages. So for Davis and Moore, education promotes a meritocracy and inequality within in education encourages us to work harder. We've got the point about differences are due to ability. Again, I'm not quite sure it's quite as relevant there. We've got Durkheim, Parsons, and then Davis and Moore. So we've got three sociologists. Again, I must have this shows. So this shows the question, the hidden curriculum. 
So this shows the hidden curriculum. Influences our experiences. This shows the hidden curriculum influences our experiences and ensures we all become ideal citizens who can function successfully within society. This shows the hidden curriculum influences our experiences and ensures we all become ideal citizens who can fun function successfully within society. Hidden curriculum influences our experiences. Okay. Functionalism's paragraph one. My paragraph two, again, I think what's the second grid? The second grid we do is Marxism. Anyone specifically mention hidden curriculum in Marxism? Well, yes, Althusser does. He argues it's how the ruling class maintain their power. It's probably those good worker attitudes are taught via the hidden curriculum as well. It's so paragraph two. Say, so, the hidden curriculum can influence experiences of education. The hidden curriculum can influence experiences of education. So the hidden curriculum can influence experiences of education by hidden curriculum can ex influence experiences of education by creating passive learners. So it can influence our experience of education by creating passive learners and disguising capitalism. Okay. So Althusser, he's the first Marxist and he's relevant. Althusser argues that the hidden curriculum argues that the hidden curriculum is how the ruling class maintain their power. It's how the ruling class maintain their power. Althusser argues the hidden curriculum is how the ruling class maintain their power. Education is an ideological, I love that phrase, state apparatus a tool used by government to teach ruling class ideas. Education is an ideological state apparatus. It's a tool used by government to teach ruling class ideas. The hidden curriculum socializes us to accept inequality. Well, we're going to accept class inequality because he says it does it socializes us to accept inequality, but the inequality he's talking us talking about is only class inequality. It's normally well, it is quite a huge failing of Marxism that it recognizes class inequality, which has to be applauded. But unless you are a later Marxist who's normally of colour themselves or a Marxist who's also female, it fails to consider gender or ethnicity. So when he says that hidden curriculum socialises us to accept inequality, he means class inequality. Okay. I'm going to leave the point there about how we're only taught uh, capitalism is either good or the only option because that will basically play into my link on why this shows. For Bowles and Gintis, the hidden curriculum, again, the hidden curriculum, it has to be done via hidden messages, those good worker attitudes. For Bowles and Gintis, the hidden curriculum 
teaches good worker attitudes as capitalism requires a passive and docile workforce who will accept low skilled low skilled low paid work education corresponds with the needs of capitalism or the workplace. Bolzing in his hidden curriculum teaches good worker attitudes as capitalism requires a passive and docile workforce who will accept low skilled, low paid work. Education corresponds with the needs of capitalism or the workplace. Again, Bourdieu is not really relevant. Um, hidden curriculum, hidden messages. Hmm, that's not true, really. Actually, it's like a just a point. It doesn't specifically mention hidden curriculum, but actually, for Bourdieu, it's via symbolic violence. So it's via symbolic violence that the working that working class groups. via symbolic violence that working class groups have their culture systematically undermined and devalued. It's via symbolic violence that working class groups have their culture systematically undermined and devalued. I think I'll probably just put that, but it, actually that is quite hidden. That hit those really the hidden curriculum if you're applying the idea that it's unintended lessons, but by completely, you know, tutting and scoffing at working class language or experiences, actually that is part of the hidden curriculum. So I'll take it back. I'm gonna pop him in there. So I've got my three sociologists for Marxism as well. And then always got to do, so this shows, and it's really important you do read the question because you will go off tangents a little bit, you'll go off you know, go off a little bit and then you've got to come back. So this shows the hidden curriculum influences our experiences of education. This shows the hidden curriculum influences our experiences of education as learners are made passive in lessons. They're made passive in lessons and never taught, oh sorry, and taught capitalism is good or the only option available. So what I'm making clear there is that the experiences of education is you as learners will be made really passive and they will only ever teach you things where capitalism is seen as good or the only option. So that directly addresses the question that it's influenced our experiences of education because now you haven't learned anything about Cuba um, and you haven't learned anything about um, very socialist states because education's purpose is to just be an ideological state apparatus to teach you the hidden messages that capitalism might not be the best situation, but it's your only possible viable solution. So there's two paragraphs for hidden curriculum for this one. There will actually eventually be a third, but I just want to apply what we've done in class for the last two weeks to exam questions so you're nice and clear. It's nice and linked in. The third paragraph we'll do when we do gender, because for paragraph three, it'll be a pink paragraph, and what we argue there is often the hidden curriculum teaches uh, particularly girls 
that science and maths um, aren't subjects they should take. So often, for example, in the textbooks, um, they're often male names and they're often examples around kind of rockets and cars. And what that does is via the hidden messages is teach girls that actually this isn't um, a very feminine subject or a subject that dominantly girls should take. Um, but just so you know, that it'll be a third paragraph on um, feminism and gender and the hidden messages, particularly within subjects like science and maths. Okay, so those are those two um, essay questions, hidden curriculum and also the schools preparing young people for work. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. But I uh, modelled one obviously before, I've modelled two now, and then I'm just kind of um, scaffolding it for you so that you'll feel nice and confident um, about the structure and things when you come to do one on your own. Thank you very much, folks. Take care.